Hey guys, it's Lauren and welcome to the Express Lane. This week we are talking all about mentorship. Now, most of us can most likely pinpoint some person in our lives that has had a big impact and really helped shape us into the person that we are today. But the truth is that you'll probably have a lot of mentors throughout your life as you change goals, you change careers, you change majors, even in college, you'll probably have a new mentor that is there to really help you in that next phase of your life to really get where you want to go. And one of the things that I actually learned this week, I didn't know this, is that one of the earliest mentions of the word mentor actually comes from Homer's The Odyssey. And what happens is when Odysseus is journeying after the Trojan War, the goddess Athena actually disguises herself as an old friend named Mentor. And she shows herself to Odysseus' son, who is um, kind of trying to figure out things while his father's away. And Athena then, as Mentor, guides him, answers questions, and really helps to support him as he's going through this whole process. And for me, I think that that is a great example of mentorship um, that really highlights the word in the sense that a mentor is somebody who's there that maybe when you are unsure about things, or you're really unsure of how to get to that next step in your career or your education. They're really there to help you out and to offer that support, that, you know, listening, but also that guidance and there to share those really great life lessons with you. So in today's video, we are counting down the top two, count them two, questions that people ask when it comes to mentorship. And number one is, what can a mentor do for me? And number two is, where do I actually find a mentor? So let's dive into it. Now, when it comes to mentorship, you want to be looking at your career goals and some of the strengths that you want to continue to build, skills that you want to continue to build in your career. Because you want to find someone who has already done these things, who already has the job that you want, who is already successful in the industry that you want to excel in, and use that as a jumping off point. And in addition to the strengths and the skills that you want to continue to build, you also want to be thinking about the weaknesses that you would like to improve upon. So if you are a person that has a lot of issues with deadlines and getting things done on time, connecting with a mentor who is really great with deadlines, where deadlines are non-negotiable, it has to be done by then, and is a real go-getter, that might be a great person to pair up with when it comes to your mentor. And I can specifically think of a good friend of mine who I really sort of viewed as a mentor when I was in college. And she was very outgoing. She was very bubbly. She was great at meeting people and networking. She had a lot of really great connections. And I was very shy. I was very soft-spoken. And connecting with her and watching her and learning from her really helped push me outside of my comfort zone and outside of my shell because you have to be outside of your comfort zone to film YouTube videos. <laughs> so she really helped me in that respect and really helped me bolster my career because I started being more comfortable with networking and really putting myself out there. When it comes to mentorship, you also want to make sure that you are in the right state of mind. And what I mean by this is, are you in a place where you are ready to learn? And not only to learn, but to actually take the things that you're learning and apply those to your life. Because when you partner up with a great mentor, they're going to share everything with you. They're going to be super transparent. They're going to share their strengths, their weaknesses, their successes, their failures. There's so much that you can take away and then apply to your life. But if you're not in a place in your life where you're ready to actually put that into action, it's not really worth it, is it? It's not really worth your time. It's not really worth your mentor's time. Think of it kind of like if you're reading a book on how to travel to Europe and the book breaks down all the steps that you need to know. It's how to, you know, set up your plan, how to get your plane tickets, where to stay, where to eat, how long you should go, all of that good stuff. It's all covered in this book. But if you have no intention of actually buying the plane ticket to go there, what's the point? Because the other thing that will most likely happen is that as you get to know your mentor and your mentor gets to know you, 
they might have some constructive criticism for you. There might be things that they think that if you improved upon this, it could really benefit you. And you have to be open to receiving that constructive criticism and open to, again, looking introspectively to then put in the work and put in the effort to make that change to better your career. So really being open to all the positive things that they have to say, as well as the constructive criticism that they have to offer, understand that all of that together is their way of guiding you and helping to get you to that next spot in your career. And that really ties into our next question is if you're willing to put in the work. So nobody, nobody wants to mentor someone who's not going to take that information and put it into action and actually show up for the meetings, show up for the phone calls and do the work that your mentor asks you to do. So make sure that you have the time available, make sure that you are 100% committed to this mentorship because if you're not, you're just going to be wasting your mentor's time. Because mentors, they're busy people. And a really great mentor, chances are they're probably mentoring somebody else already. So you really wanna make it worth your mentor's while. And what are ways that you can do that? I think back to my internship that I did when I was in college and I interned for free because that's what art majors typically do is they intern for free. And for me, I showed up every single day to my internship on time. I did whatever was asked of me. I put in the work that was required of me. But then on top of it, I was there to ask questions. I had questions prepared every day, the things that I wanted to learn from my mentor. And then on top of it, I was also prepared for to, to really talk with my mentor about what I could give back to her. So whether that was helping to design something or helping to write something, I was very much in touch with my own skill set and things that I could offer her in addition to free work that would really make it worth her while to put in the time and effort to invest in me and my career development. So now that we've talked about what a mentor can do for you, let's talk about how you find a mentor. And the good news is that a mentor might not be very far away at all. It might be somebody that you already know could be a great mentor for you. And if there isn't anybody that comes to mind right away, I would strongly recommend reaching out to your network and just letting your friends, your colleagues know, hey, this year I really want to start a mentorship and find someone to mentor me. And I, these are my goals. These are my career aspirations. Do you know anyone that you think could be a good fit for me? And hopefully they'll be able to point you toward that direction as well. And if you're not still not able to find a mentor at that point, these are the three areas that I would recommend checking out. So the first place that I would recommend looking would be looking up. And what I mean by that is looking up the ladder, so to speak. Think about a manager, a team lead, an executive at your company, or even somebody that is higher up the ranks at another company that you'd consider working at a few years from now and connect with them as a great leader. And this is really a, an example of conventional mentorship. So conventional mentorship is that very typical, um, traditional type of mentorship that we think of, of finding somebody who is already on the career path that you're on, who has been doing it for years, who does it well, and who is established in the industry and has really made a name for themselves and that there are things that you can learn from them. Now, in addition to following that traditional route of looking up the corporate ladder, there is also a lot to be said about looking from side to side. And what I mean by that is looking to your friends, your colleagues, even previous coworkers. So these are people that are on that corporate ladder that are on the same rung, maybe they're rung above, they're rung below, um, whatever happens to be, but they are kind of in similar level that you are. And this could be someone, for example, that is in your cube area. And maybe this person's really, really, really good with technology and you're not, I know I'm not. <laughs> So this person could be there to answer your technology questions. And 
whenever a situation arises or whenever you have a question, uh, this person becomes your go-to for technology because not only are they able to fix things, they're able to actually teach you how they fix things so that you can be better building your skill set as well and your technology knowledge as well. Now, this example of mentorship is what we would consider informal mentorship. And so informal mentorship would be somebody that you reach out to when a question arises or when something comes up that you need answered at that moment in time. Now, another example of looking side to side is situational mentorship. Now, I have been one of those very lucky individuals that the individual that held my previous job ended up moving up in the company. So the fact that she still stayed with the company, even when I was moving into her role, meant that she was there for me to ask all the questions to. And furthermore, she really just kind of took me under her wing and made sure that I had what I needed to do my job well. She taught me the tips, she taught me the tricks, everything that I needed to make sure that I was able to do what I needed to do in this brand new role. And for me, the fact that she was able to mentor me in that way, I was then able to mentor a couple of other individuals at other offices who moved into that same role once I'd been within the company for a few years to then be able to really pay it forward and teach them my top tips and my top tricks that I'd learned in that same position to help better them in that area as well. And that's kind of the cool part about situational mentorship is that a lot of times you don't even realize that you end up becoming a mentor to someone and someone might not even realize that they're a mentor to you. And I think about a few of the um, really close friends of mine that I worked with at a previous company and we've all still stayed in touch um, and remained pretty close. Obviously we do a lot of fun things together too, but they've also always been there when I needed someone to look over a resume or I've been there when they've needed help with a project for grad school or things like that. So to still be able to look to those individuals to shed some light or expertise on an area that maybe you want a little bit of help with, um, they can be there to really take you under their ring and help out with that kind of stuff. So one of the last places that I would recommend then looking is to actually look online. And when I was doing research for this video, one of the videos that I watched is Marie Forleo's How to Find a Mentor. It's a great video. I will link it in the description box below if you wanna watch that video next. Um, but one of the things that she talked about really hit home for me because it's something that I've done for years and I guess I didn't really even know that I was doing it. Um, and she talks about actually seeking out mentorship online. And she says that there are so many individuals that have put out books, podcasts, blogs, eBooks, audiobooks, whatever it happens to be. There's so many resources online that you can learn mentorship lessons from. Because when somebody takes the time to write a book or to put together an extensive blog or to even create YouTube video series, they are sharing their life experiences. They're sharing their lessons for success. They're sharing, you know, failures that they've had and what you can learn from them. There is so much wisdom being shared in these different types of platforms. So really understanding that you can have a mentor, somebody that you've never even met before. And I think about this in terms of I have a specific individual that I have followed for years. I have all of her books. I listen to all of her podcasts and she's really been an inspiration to me. And I've, of course, never met her, but I've learned so much through what she has shared online and in these different books. So I would highly recommend thinking about who are people that already inspire you and what are ways that they are putting themselves out there and sharing these additional pieces of wisdom that you can take away as your mentor as well. And the great thing about all of this information being recorded in a book or a YouTube video or a podcast episode is that you can listen to this information, watch this information, or read this information over and over and over again. There's so much to be learned from going back a couple of years, five years, 10 years from now, and listening to those lessons because they might resonate with you at a different time in your life than they do right now. So now that we've shared what a mentor can do for you and how you can actually find a mentor, we would love to hear from you in the comment section below. 
let us know if you have found a mentor, what was the greatest thing that you learned from your mentor, or if there's a mentor online that you found through a book or a podcast, let us know what their information is in the comments below as well so that other people can check them out and learn about new mentors here on this channel. We would also love it if you followed us on Instagram. We have three different Instagram accounts for our River Falls, our St. Croix Falls, and our Red Wing offices. And all throughout this month, we are going to be sharing our Mentorship Monday posts. And we are going to ask different members of each office to share their mentorship stories about a mentor who's inspired them and some of the greatest lessons that they've learned from that mentor. So we will link all three of those Instagram accounts in the description box below. You won't want to miss those posts. And finally, we would love it if you enjoyed this video, if you would give us a thumbs up, that helps out our channel a lot. And we will be back here with another video next Wednesday at four o'clock Central Standard Time. We'll see you then with even more tips about how you can get your career in the express lane.